Well, you know, just last week we were talking about the eclipse really kind of having sort of a mystical uh, aura to it. And some believe that today's eclipse will have a strong spiritual meeting for them. Yesterday, the Unity of Buffalo Church on Delaware Avenue hosted an astrologist to talk about the broader meaning of this event. She shared insights about celestial patterns related to the eclipse and ways that they could impact our lives. It's a pattern, so we constantly have opportunities for change. We constantly have uh, these different events happen in our lives, but when, when we can stop and focus on them, take, you know, like we're all taking time out of our day tomorrow, hopefully, to have, have this experience. So it's a, a time to pause and maybe do that a little more often. And Mary Beth adds that the most important thing is to be present during the eclipse. While you may want to pick up your phone, she says you really should just pause and savor the moment. And we were surprised when we started to look around to find out that it isn't just astrologists who feel that there's a strong spiritual aspect. Uh, I know in my church, I'm a Roman Catholic, uh, there uh, a number of parishioners have talked about that. There was a talk and a, a weekend that was happening at Stella Niagara to talk about the spiritual aspect of this. So it isn't necessarily just for people who believe that our lives are ruled by the stars and the planets. Uh, there's also, Scott, just the whole sense of coming together and having a shared experience. I love it. I'm more excited than I ever thought I was going to be to experience this. And we're seeing this from our live camera up here on Channel 2's rooftop. And you know, Gary Sadal from the Science Museum is joining us now. And Gary, the, the eclipses have been going on for thousands and thousands of years. So it makes you wonder what the you know cavemen and everyone was wondering when all of a sudden, once every hundred years or so, it all of a sudden just turned black for them too. It had to be a little scary. Yeah. I would imagine it would be. And the good news is our science and our mathematics have gotten a lot more precise, so we are not caught off guard by these things any longer. Right. Obviously, we've known today's coming for a long time. We know that there'll be another eclipse in North America in 2044 and back here in Buffalo in 2144. What surprised me is how much scientists can learn about the Earth and the atmosphere and so many different things by watching an eclipse. Talk a little bit about that. You know, there's a few things that are going to be changing during the eclipse, and NASA's taking advantage of that. That's why they're going to be flying planes that will be taking photographs of the sun's corona. That's why we'll be sending rockets up into the atmosphere to collect data about the changes in the atmosphere as a result of the eclipse. So we're not letting this moment pass us by. This is a really unique, really special moment for us, and both NASA and all of us here in Western New York are hoping to learn something. Now, if folks go outside right now, because we can see right there, that's our shot from our roof. Yes. It looks like we're, I don't know, maybe one eighth of the way through or whatever it is. But if folks go outside to take a look now, can they just wear their sunglasses right now? Or since it's already begun, they need to be careful. We are definitely in a period of the eclipse right now where you are going to need those solar glasses. Okay. In fact, just before we came onto this segment, we were doing the same. We had those solar glasses on. You can look up and you can. You're 100% right. You can see about an eighth of the moon starting to move in front of the sun. It's a really impressive sight with these patches of sunshine that we're starting to see through here in Buffalo. It's incredibly exciting. And even with those clouds, I think I heard it earlier. It's a little bit of a mystical yes. effect and I like right, it. Right, right. I think it makes it all the more dramatic yes. uh, so that the reveal hopefully will have uh, it be completely clear, but either way, I think it's just a stunning, stunning, stunning sight, and it makes it uniquely ours. And you know, the, the sun is just over my left shoulder, and uh, for some reason, I keep wanting to look up there. Don't, don't do, do it. it. Don't, don't do it. Do it. <laughs> Stop your urges, right? Exactly. When someone says, look an eclipse, you need to at least pause and grab those glasses before you do. Right. right. Well, glasses are on the way. Our producer just told yeah. us, Scott, so you don't have to worry about uh, holding back at all. Um, we talked about the eclipse obviously has happened over the millennia and there were times when people thought that it was signifying some big change but a lot of people really do have an emotional reaction and whether it's because of all the media hype nowadays or sure. maybe just being together 
in a group experiencing something that's unique. It is a profound experience. It absolutely is. Anything that's happening in outer space of this magnitude with this much precision, it's so rare. And I think that's what's really pulling everyone together here. We've seen it at the Buffalo Museum of Science. We're seeing people express interest in a field of science and a field of learning that maybe wasn't of particular interest to them before. And it struck us this week that when the next eclipse happens in North America in 2044, we might be inspiring those future right. subject matter experts at NASA right here by watching coverage just like this. And Gary, we all know what nighttime feels like. We yes. all experience it every day. Yes. Will this be darker than normal, than the average evening? It's going to get very dark. So one of the ways that we've been drawing an analogy to the amount of light that you might see during this eclipse is sort of like looking at the moon at night. So you can see that glow coming off of the moon, but it's not complete darkness, mm -hmm. but you'll start to see that dimming. And that level of light during totality is safe for viewing without your eclipse glasses. Will we see other stars or other planets? Will there be anything else near yes. the sun and the moon? You know, in the lower left of the sky, we'll see Venus in the upper right. Excuse me, excuse me the lower right, you'll see Venus in the upper left. You'll see Jupiter if the skies are clear enough. There's a lot of things floating around in the atmosphere right. up there. Yeah. Um, so we're hoping to see some of those items if the sky starts to clear up. And you can see things like comets. You can th see things like other stars. Lots of things will be happening up there in space. So for all the parents that are home with their children right now, if they step outside, make sure they put on their glasses yes. and they can go up and they can take a look and see some of the moon over the sun right now. You absolutely can right now. We're here in downtown Buffalo and simply by putting on those solar viewing glasses, you can catch a glimpse. The only thing we recommend is if you have a young child, make sure those glasses are really tight so they don't start to fall down on their eyes. Right. Absolutely right. I know that our meteorologists Patrick Hammer and Jennifer Stadonis are really breathing a big sigh of relief because uh, they were so hesitant to tell us for sure one way or the other what was going to happen. And we're very, very fortunate that uh, we're getting some great shots, some great glimpses Beautiful. of the sun and the moon as these changes start to occur. And I think they're going to keep changing and keep us in suspense. This is really exciting. It's a lot more exciting than I thought it was going to be because we're all sharing this common thing together at the same time. Absolutely. And when we start to slide down that dimmer switch and the light starts to go down, it'll happen quickly and it'll last for a little bit less than four minutes. And we don't want to miss that. Absolutely not. We're going to keep you all prepared. So right now, folks, stick with us. There is much more to come on this special coverage of the Great American Eclipse. We'll be back right after this short break. But first, here's a look from uh, I thought downtown Buffalo. Maybe that is. I can't really see my I eyes. I think that's our sun oh, no. camera. There, there we go. Is. There's the sun cam again. <laughs> That is a cool shot. We'll be back right after this, folks.